All right, VJ, you know, you mentioned earlier Kevin Durant being held to such a high standard. Mm Mm-hmm. And Charles Barkley might be the epitome of that, right? <laughs> uh, he has said that Durant won't get the respect that his game warrants from the veterans, the old heads such as himself, until he leads a team. Not just being the best player like he was in Golden State, but actually like it's his team. And he leads them to a championship. And uh, said that he needs to be the quote-unquote bus driver. Uh, rather than just a passenger. Even even if you're a prominent passenger, there's still only one bus driver. Yep. And uh, KD took exception to that on his podcast today. Here's what he said. Bus riders, bus drivers. Like, what does that even mean? We play a team game, I thought, at the end of the day. And we all play with great players. But I feel like I can stand out amongst any player. I don't have to minimize myself, even if I'm around great players. So, no, nah, I never looked at it as, as if... I'm riding a bus because I played a lot of minutes and I scored a lot of points for that team. Who is the group of guys that I'm supposed to go have a conversation with the, to, to ask if I can get respect from? It's just a bunch of shit <laughs> you just make up, like bus riders, bus drivers. Bro, I played a lot of minutes. I shot a lot of shots. I made a lot of shots. What are you talking about? I'm going to say this, yeah. and then I'm going to turn it over to you, VJ. Okay, okay. I, 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 look, the, I, I'm, I dig what KD said, hmm? right? It's a team game. Obviously, he did his thing. But I do think it's a little disingenuous to say, what does it mean? What bus driver, bus rider? We, we all know what it means. You know what I'm saying? And now I would say this. There can be maybe more than one bus driver, right? Yeah, and like KD was, well, when he was there, yeah. yeah. He was one of the bus drivers. Okay, all right. Um, Showtime. It was Magic and Kareem. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there have been multiple bus drivers. um, But generally, one is viewed as like, it's his team, right? And Golden State, even as KD was winning finals MVPs, was Steph's team because he kind of set that culture. He had been there. Um, but but what's your take? I like what he said about is there a group of guys I'm supposed to go to and ask for their respect? <laughs> and he, look, and I love Charles as I think just about everybody does. But the, the we it can't be lost on us. And I respect Charles and give him his props for speaking his mind and just saying what he feels needs to be said. But it can't be lost on us that Charles don't have a ring. <laughs> <laughs> that Charles did not – well, he was the bus driver. He got he drove a team to the finals but didn't beat Michael Jordan as many didn't. And then and, – and KD kind of, you know, put out a tweet about this a month or so ago. <laughs> he did go to Houston mm-hmm. to play with Akeem Olajuwon mm-hmm. and Clyde Drexler, and then Drexler left, and then Pippen came in. And for people that say they were old, okay, they were toward the end – Drexler did retire with Barkley there. But if you look at Barkley's numbers, the year before he went to Houston, VJ, it was 23 and 11. Mm -hmm. He was still one of the top elite players in the league. Elijah Wan's numbers were still huge. And Drexler was still doing his thing, giving you 19, 7, and 6 or something like that. So they when they got together that first year and they got beat by Utah in the conference finals. They were all still great players. And so KD can push back on Charles if he wants and be like, dude, you didn't win it as a bus driver. And when you went to a super team, you didn't win it. So so you don't need to be opening your mouth. At the very least, I made the most of my super team. (laughs) At the very least, you got you didn't even do that. So I'm just saying KD could go that route, but but your thoughts. I'm, first of all, that's that DMV humor. That, that's that. That's that PG County. That DMV where I come from. Humor right there. Where he's like, "What is the group of guys I'm supposed to go to and say, hey, do y'all like me or not?' <laughs> like, like that's that. That's that sarcastic, you know, a hole type, you know, humor that we carry in the DMV. So I felt that, and I felt everything else he said. But at the end of the day, too, 
I feel Barkley. I'm kind of torn on this one because I was a major, huge Barkley fan when he was playing in the league. Barkley was the first NBA star I ever saw with my own eyes. The first time I ever saw an NBA game was the Bullets uh, in Old Capitol Center, Landover, Maryland, against the Sixers. So I've always had an infatuation against Barkley. I went for Phoenix in 94. I wanted them to beat Jordan in the Bulls. So I, I feel where Barkley's coming from, but I also feel where KD is coming from. But a lot of this is also media-driven, too, when you talk Talk about that whole bus driver thing in in uh in Golden State because they are there are a handful of people, more than a handful, who said, well, no, that was KD. They needed KD because LeBron had beat that 73 win team and they had to go get KD. So it does make it sound like you needed a bus driver. You didn't have one. So I feel where KD's coming from, where it's like, I know, bro, I dropped a lot of buckets. I was busting, you know what? Like I was, like LeBron was switching off of me in the finals in the fourth quarter. Let's not act like that didn't happen. That's because that's with me. I'm KD. I'm Kevin Durant. So I feel where he's coming from. But this is what we created in Sports Talk TV and Sports Talk Radio. Now we have to have these guys. You know, they have to be validated. Now everybody's got to be validated by by the by the greats. So well, Barkley, I, I do. Barkley, I, I do. Go ahead. Barkley speaking on that half. And then Durant's defending his generation of saying, like, you know, all right, so who do I need to go to? Like, you don't think you don't you don't think Steph feel like he gotta go to nobody. You don't think Well, Giannis, well because Steph has led teams to I, championships I, I, as the bus I, 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 Hold on. But see, That's once wild. again, for those two years when Durant was there, that wasn't their narrative, Chris. Their narrative was not that Curry, even though we know Curry is such a great professional that he was real enough. He pulled a Dwayne Wade. Remember the first year in the finals with the Heatles? And 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 the way he tried to give it to LeBron, realized LeBron wasn't ready yet. But that following year, he's like, bro, okay, you got to take this over because this is this is your team and this is your time now. And then when LeBron did that, they went back to back. I, I don't think K Steph did. I look. You don't think he took a step back? KD averaged what, 30 points in those finals or whatever it was. Yeah, Steph, Steph was just accommodating. Exactly. Steph still averaged twenty seven in the finals. I, well, he's twenty seven. It wasn't like like they their games fit together really well, so they both could maximize themselves or you know play. They could both do what they do together. I, we know that. Whereas Wade and LeBron, Wade did have to literally step back and be like, "I'm gonna be about eighty percent of what I could be." Steph never really had to do that, and that's why they were a better team than Miami Heat because their superstars could just do do what they do, and they obviously and they play great together. Whereas Miami, somebody Bosh had to step back, Wade had to step back to let LeBron carry him, and so and then you look at the Showtime Lakers, they all kind of just did themselves, and they were great. So, but that that's a, that's getting off on a tangent. But um, here's what I will say. The reason KD gets the flack he gets for going to Golden State the way he did is just because that team was so stacked. There's nothing wrong. Like I said, when we look at Showtime, it was Magic and Kareem. When we look at several teams, it was a few players getting it done. And people don't disrespect that championship or take away from that championship. Everybody knows Kevin Durant was great. And he was the the legitimate finals MVP in those championship series that they won. But the reason there's the pushback is because that team was so great, even without him. You know what I'm saying? And the feeling was that, yeah, you certainly made him better. You made him freaking unbeatable. But... It was easy. And I, I do think this. As great as KD was in those finals, VJ, you know this. Man, it's just easier when you got so much talent on the court. I mean, like, everybody goes crazy over KD hitting that shot. What was it, game four in Cleveland over LeBron? They were up 2-1. Um, you had Steph on the court drawing attention. You had Clay on the court drawing attention. I mean, it's just easier to get it done when you got players like that on the court that the defense is paying attention to, particularly Steph, because they were focusing the defensive coverage on Steph. And so that's what people are looking at. I like to see KD get it done. Now, VJ, I think he made a mistake in leaving because I think as they kept winning, the narrative was slowly shifting from, yeah, man, he went to this team where it was easy to win, to 
yo, he's just great. He the best player in the world. Nobody was saying that before he went to Golden State. He's the best player in the world. They were saying it when he was winning championships. And then when they lost it in 2019 without him, it really looked like, oh, they really need him. Because last two finals they've been in without him, Cleveland and Toronto, they lost. So I think had KD stayed there, had three or four rings at this point, I don't think people be looking back at, oh, it was easy for him. He shouldn't have went there. They be just saying, man, they need him. He came at the right time, and he's the best player on that team. And all these top ten conversations we having about Steph, I think they'd be about KD. All right, so then let's let's back up then. So, because your question is that you know, are you the topic you you directed to me was the flack that he gets. So that that's the point I made. You kind of almost proved my point for me right there. If it, back to Barkley saying he needs to be the bus driver, but you guys are saying the two years that they won the championship, he was the bus driver and he was the bus driver because it was so called. I easy. think people are saying he was the best player, but Steph was the bus driver. No, I think that's the feeling. No, I, At least, I, and that I, I certainly was Barkley saying you know, I, because the the teams, the defenses that they face, game planned for Steph. Steph had already set a culture. And it's like if somebody went to San Antonio, a great player. Like Kawhi. Kawhi was the finals MVP. Who was the bus driver? It's Tim Duncan. It was his, he was the bus driver for his whole career there because he set the culture. And that's what people mean by about Steph. Well, that's but that's once again, I, I I have to disagree with that because when the Warriors just won the championship, then it wouldn't have been all the oh Steph validated himself or what are you gonna say now? That was all directed at you guys took my team from me and said it was Durant's took my team. team yes, from me. yes, no, yes, no, no, people, no, no. yes, they there, did. That was a false narrative, and I I said I, it. Of the, the, that Steph needs a Finals MVP to validate himself. I, I agree. I agree. I with think you. that was ridiculous. I agree but, with but you. Perceptions often reality. So he needed to get it just to shut people up. Okay. So then the years he didn't get it, the still it was still he well, didn't get it the first year. They had to, was anybody well, saying it was Iguodala's team? No, nobody would say. Well, well, I think we know a little better between Iguodala and Kevin Durant. Like I think we know. You uh, think people said it was Kevin Durant's team when I, they won? I, I don't think. Champions. I know. I listened to the Bob radio. Bob Myers watched TV. didn't even say it was his team. I'm not talking about Bob Myers. We're talking about the perception, the general perception that he took. Steph yes, team. absolutely. Stop That's it. are you Stop are you. Chris, honestly, do you not watch the shows or listen if to all the shows? If that was the like, case, that's if what that was the saying. case, then Barkley wouldn't be saying what he's saying. No, Barkley. Then, then Kevin Durant wouldn't have felt the need to go somewhere else and prove he could lead a team. No, I don't think. I don't think that's why you left Golden State. I think why that's why he leave. I think you left Golden State because he he went to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. And I think there's a little more. A lot of his podcast is really good today. He did talk about the Draymond stuff very briefly. But I think there was more there to that. And they were both real enough to, okay, you leaving. And once he left, they kind of throw their shots at each other through social media or whatever. But they're kind of mostly quiet about it. But I think that was a part of the reason why he left. Because Durant is such a slow-mo and Draymond is in your face, in your face, in your face, in your face every day. I think Durant at one point was like, all right, cool, I got my two rings here man it's not about going somewhere and proving i could do it myself is i came to do what i wanted to do and now i'm gonna leave lebron did the same thing went to miami he got the he, monkey off his he back got the monkey off his exa- exactly oh, and oh, now oh. you he thought people wouldn't be critical of him he said so that he, he said that in an interview in peace he yeah he but admitted obviously that. that wasn't the case he admitted he, people still holding holding him accountable all right